EVE Online is a game I'm sure a lot of you have heard about. It's a MMORPG that uh, takes place in a universe called New Eden. It's developed by CCP and it's a sandbox MMO. I mean, you can mine, pirate, explore, manufacture, and do many other things. This game is huge and can take a huge time investment um, if you choose to let it suck you in. It's also the game that has been featured in many news articles due to its economy, wars, and sheer amount of money being completely destroyed and lost to the expanse that we call space. Uh, it's a game where you forge your own story, and the game is definitely what you make it. Today we're going to be taking a quick look into EVE Online with the question, is it worth playing in 2024? What is the state of the game? What's the population? Is there enough to do? Well, the question is kind of stupid because we all know there's more than enough to do in EVE Online. I have been an EVE player since 2010, so I have been playing this game for quite some time. Learning EVE is one of those things that you don't forget how hard it was, so I'm going to try to do my very best to keep this review unbiased. So is EVE Online new player friendly in 2024? So the answer is yes. Um, I do think that this game has come a long way since its release back in 2003. I mean, it's 20 years old, over 20 years old. Um, so this game has had plenty of time to revamp its new player experience. Uh, it puts you through a series of missions corresponding with what professions you may be interested in. Uh, it gives you free ships, modules, um, therefore making it easier on you to progress through New Eden. The thing is, this game isn't something that you can learn overnight. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that later, but... It's something that you have to put a considerable amount of time into if you want to be relevant or take part in any PvP activity. You can't buy your way into this game, at least not in the way of skill and knowledge of the game. I mean, granted, it's a game where you can semi-passively play once you figure out what you like to do in the game. Certain activities can be done while watching Netflix. So the state of the game is pretty good. I mean, this game has had numerous expansions, with the latest expansion being released only a month and a half ago. Since its release in 2003, this game has had a lot of content added. Uh, between faction warfare updates, planetary interaction, manufacturing updates, and player-owned structures being released and updated frequently, this game is very much alive and relevant, even in 2024. Um, the graphics have been updated significantly as well. CCP seems to be fully invested in this game with future expansions planned. So let's talk about the population. Is it healthy? The population of EVE Online has fluctuated quite a bit over the years. Um, usually in the summer, uh, at least historically, the population will dip significantly just due to the fact that people are outside doing things on vacation. But as soon as school starts and fall comes and summer's over, everybody's done vacationing, uh, you'll see a spike in numbers. As well as every time they release an expansion, you'll see a nice increase there as well. I remember a time where EVE Online had a peak of 65,000 players playing at one time. Now, granted, I know there's a lot of people that multi-box or play multiple accounts at the same time, but this is still an impressive number, especially considering EVE Online is one server. Yes, keep in mind that if you have a friend that plays EVE Online, no matter where you are in the game, you can find them and play with them. Uh, there are no servers like World of Warcraft where you have to create a new character and play with your friends on that new character or pay to have it transferred. It is one single server. The population today tends to fluctuate between 28 to 35,000, uh, which is a good number in my opinion. It's a big enough number to have plenty of players in space to keep things interesting, but also there are still some systems out there that are relatively quiet which can provide other opportunities. And if I'm being honest, all MMOs have their peaks and then taper off. So what do you do in EVE Online? Um, well, there's a lot to do, it's a sandbox. So, I mean, I could probably make an entire video talking just about all the activities that you can do. But your general activities include mining, ratting, which is PvE content, uh, destroying NPC ships, and exploring space dungeons, which is cool. Um, pirating, which is PvP, uh, manufacturing, which is crafting, uh, exploring data and relic sites, which is another dungeon type game mode, uh, mission running, salvaging, planetary interaction, uh, trading and hauling. And I'm really only scratching the surface here because each one of those activities will play into each other or interact with each other to a certain extent and bring other opportunities 
for you as well. Every single item in the game that a player uses is made by another player. There is certain items that are seeded by NPCs, such as certain blueprints and skill books, but 98% of the items in the game are made by player intervention. The game has been recognized numerous times for its economy, getting the name the stock market in space or the stock market game because there are many people that play this game purely for the market and economy. You can make a ton of ESC, which is the in-game currency, interstellar credits, and become space rich purely by just trading. And there's people out there that do that without even leaving a station. As I said before, every single item is made by another player, so the prices are set by the players. The market fluctuates like a real economy in real life. You have supply and demand, taxes, logistical issues to deal with. It's fairly in depth. In my own experience, I have found that this is one of the things that really draws new people in because it's intriguing. It's hard to find a game that offers this amount of complexity in its economy. Most people are used to playing MMOs where you have a general auction house and it's basically a global market for the whole server. Well, in EVE Online, each station has its own market. So we're gonna talk about the learning curve because it is known as one of the hardest games to get into just due to the fact that there is so much to do in this game. Um, the game also has a very hard time slowly feeding you information. It tends to throw everything at you at once. I myself have restarted or tried to get into EVE Online probably three or four times before I really did find myself enjoying it. My recommendations are you should join a corporation as soon as you can. Uh, these corporations are the guilds in the game, corp for short. Um, there is a wide range of different corps, some demanding some very ridiculous requirements and login time, I would recommend jumping into a newbie corp because they're out there and they will help you learn the game as well as give you free ships and modules. Jumping into a corp that is willing to teach new players is one of the best things to do and is what helped me learn this game and really find what I love to do. It's okay to try everything in this game, but something to keep in mind is that every activity you do requires you to skill up your character via skill points which are accrued over time. You have to inject these skill books and then train these skills to a certain level to be able to fly certain ships, use modules, or participate in certain activities. Many corps offer skill training plans that will help you spec your character up and get you flying those ships. Also, if you want 1 million free skill points, I have a referral code in the description that you can use. This will give you 1 million free skill points even if you aren't a new player, as long as you haven't used a link before. So let's talk about the community. Uh, the community in this game is actually quite impressive. There are plenty of YouTube videos out there that you can learn how to play the game. The in-game community is fairly friendly and there are so many different chat channels in-game and on Discord that you can jump into and ask questions as well. The amount of love that players have for this game is pretty cool. There are so many third-party tools out there that players themselves have created that correspond and work with EVE, making your EVE experience more enjoyable and easier to play. I actually made a video on some of these third-party tools if you want to check that out. I'll put that in the top left corner of the video. CCP does have an annual fan fest for EVE in Iceland once a year. Uh, I've never gone myself, but I've seen pictures and videos and it looks pretty legit. On top of that, CCP has an annual election for CSM members, which stands for Council of Stellar Management. This is a group of players that fly out to Iceland for a five-day summit and discuss upcoming updates for the game and even ask their input to a certain extent. Uh, the CSM members are elected by the players of EVE. It's an innovative way to keep in touch with your player base and stay focused on what your players want out of the game. The CSM thing was always something that I found cool. It made EVE stand out from other games and MMOs specifically. So we're gonna talk about Nullsec. So Nullsec is where a lot of the more veteran players reside, as well as where you can start making some good ISK. Uh, with EVE, the more risk, the better reward. Also, it's the place where there are no NPC ships to fight on your behalf if you get shot by another player. In EVE, you are never really safe. If you choose to undock, there is no real safe place. So the general rule of thumb is if you can't afford to lose it, don't fly it. In Nullsec, corporations 
and alliances can lay claim to space and systems. Throughout the history of EVE, there have been numerous wars between these alliances fighting over many different things. These wars have even caught the attention of journalists, resulting in countless posts about EVE, its wars, and how much they cost. These NOSEC alliances are very organized. Um, the level of leadership and planning that goes into these wars and operating these alliances alone is on a level that you don't see in any other game. The professionalism and organization is top tier. These wars are what really move the in-game market because when ships get blown up, more ships must be made to continue the fight. So the cost, we all know games have a cost, right? Um, EVE Online is free to play. Where they get you is the ships and activities you cannot do unless you have a subbed account. Uh, Alpha accounts are free and Omega are paid. Uh, the good news is you can pay for this sub with in-game currency. If you're savvy enough at making ISK, that is. Uh, you can turn your ISK into Plex and then use that Plex to buy game time, among other things in the cash shop. Now, I know the phrase cash shop uh, gives people kind of a sour taste in their mouth, but, but hear me out. Uh, this game does not suffer from many of the issues that other games do. Sure, in the cash shop you can use Plex or real money to buy skill points and therefore use those skill points to skill up your character and then buy bigger and better ships. But the thing is, it doesn't matter because yes, you may be able to buy your way into having a bigger and better ship and be more powerful, but if you do not know how to correctly fly that ship, you are basically a huge loot pinata. There are a lot of people that try to buy their way into this game and then soon find out they lack the knowledge of the game and the ships, therefore losing all of their money. My recommendations are to just play the game and not worry about having the best ship because every ship in the game has its own purpose. Bigger doesn't necessarily mean better. So as I said, there is a monthly subscription. Uh, you can sub month to month or you can sub more months at a time and get a discount. It's up to you. Or if you don't want to pay any of that, uh, like I said before, you can make money in game and use that money in game to buy game time. Therefore, giving you the ability to play the game entirely for free if you choose to do so. This game isn't for everyone. The developers of the game know that and they are completely okay with that. They have come out with this publicly. And it's also something that I am completely okay with as well because there are games out there that give you that experience of flying a ship first person. If you like this game, or not, it's up to you, but in my experience I found myself continuously coming back to it because there is something about this game that is so intriguing. Remember, this game is a sandbox. Create your own story. With that being said, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, sound off in the comments. Uh, what do you think of EVE Online? Um, have you tried it? Have you heard of it? What do you think? Until next time, fly safe.